an insane map number one for Paper X to pull out. I'm joined by Coach Alex after the win. Coach, I wanted to ask you, your team doesn't have one set IGL in these super close, nail-biting games that come down to overtime. Do you think having that flexibility helps your team? I, I think it depends. Um, in, in today's case, I think someone else stepped up. Like, Davai was calling the last few rounds, and I thought he did a really good job. And in this kind of moment, sometimes, you know, when everyone shares ideas, I think it's uh, very helpful. Okay, well, best of luck in map number two. Thank you very much, and we'll send things back to the desk. What a fantastic start there for Paper X. Who need IGLs when you've got W Gaming? Am I right, Sean? No. no. <laughs> you need something. That's all no. you need. It's literally something. He's plus 11. He's the only one even positive on his team. He was unstoppable. Yeah, he played exceptional well, but I do like what Alex mentioned at the end there. Devi stepped up, and he yes. had massive rounds. There were two rounds in a row, like a 4K and then a 3K that was outrageous, but also his calling late in the game. You do need a voice like that when things get yes. really hairy. Yeah, or you could do this, because if we take a look at the Verizon high-speed moment, in fact, I feel like Paper X as a team, uh, Doug is just the high-speed team, and this was yeah. crazy how many rounds they won like this. Low-key, they very well. I mean, it, it might just be, become branded the Paper X high-speed moment, because one HP. They're consistent in that, yeah. Him having one HP there, something had so okay. many tee off moments like this. One. Dude, we were watching and went, those two players are weak. This son of a gun's gonna do it. Dude, I'm, like, I'm so happy they put all of the clips in. Like, we, yeah. we just kept on like running into these moments. We're like, all right, use that as the high speed clip. All right, just use, use that all as the high speed clip. Just like, <laughs> compile them all together. Everything we've got, just put them all in. Devai getting that Crazy. with the Spectre when it was 9 11. Remember, they were still down. They were yes. pushing for OT at that point. Devai's calling and his individual playmaking got them to that point. Yeah, we can talk about something and the stats look really good, but we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the impact that Dubai had on that map. Well, my question for you guys is that, I mean, they only won those the rounds that they yeah. won by doing stuff like that. Uh, Sean, do they get away with keep doing that for the rest of the series? I, that's where I'm scared right now. I think this map was super important for Loud to take. Yeah, Lotus agreed. is a three-sided map and they could have dictated the pace and they did. They had such a big lead at some point in that game, right? But the pace of PRX and the way they retook those sites, the mechanical skill coming in and the individual plays, Loud couldn't handle them. And when I look ahead into this series now, going into Split, going into Pearl, these are maps where actually PRX can thrive at an even more successful rate than what we just saw in Lotus. Yeah, I'm sure you guys at home are wondering, what is something's uh, warm-up routine? Let's take a look in the Aim Lab shoot-around. I don't even think this guy needs a warm-up routine at this point, uh, but uh, Sean, you know, he was just being the, the, the something that we knew and loved from the Pacific Leagues. I mean, he could do it all, right? I, I, I got the stats on it. He got five shotgun kills that game. It felt like he had about 10. His AWP was popping off. His rifles were entering sites as well. I was so impressed with just his like in the on the fly jet decision making, right? Pulling the judge out, pulling the shorty out, dash updrafting in someone's face in the biggest parts of that map. Yeah, he's so much fun to watch. And it, I mean, you were the one who said it on the desk as we were watching. It was so funny and I think so on point. He's what every Jet in ranked wants to be, yeah. <laughs> right? Like he plays at that pace. He's just like shorty dra uh, dashing through cloud bursts. He's just mad. And I, I think to go back and start thinking about the rest of the series, Sean, I think you're right. I would be really concerned if I was in Loud's camp right now because Lotus felt like a map you needed to win and they just weren't able to pull it off. Yeah, speaking of Loud, let's see what their coach Fraud had to say ahead of map two. Fraud, a tough loss in map number one for Loud. Your team has never played against Paper X before. They came out with this new double controller, double duelist composition on Lotus. Did their style catch your team off guard? And if so, how will you adapt for the second map? I wouldn't say their style because we're kind of aware of how they play. I think uh, it was just a little bit chaotic in the post plan situations, uh, something that we have to just calm down our communication, uh, be more patient, be more disciplined, and you know, hopefully we'll turn it around for the next map. All right, well, hopefully that comes through. Thank you very much, Fraud, and best of luck in map number two. Back to you, Ian, too. I mean, they have to turn it around next map on split if they want a chance here to make it straight to the upper uh, bracket final. He said that the, the, the play style didn't really catch him off guard, and I have an interesting stat just to throw back into because remember we said that Paper X, they are the uh, fastest team when it comes to attack, attacks yes. like Plant, uh, averaging at 47 seconds, but on that map, they actually averaged 55 seconds. They were eight seconds slower and than even, what they usually are. Even to one of that into their attack half to break it down was 40 seconds per round. Like, they were just sending it on their attack half. 
And then on the other half, when they switch and Loud got to set the pace, Loud bumped that up to 56 seconds. So that just shows what you could do on Lotus. I don't think you can really do that on Split, though. Yeah, I, I do very quickly want to go back to this, though, because I think Paper X showed both sides, right? Yeah. You think about the overtime round where they're just contacted into A. I, that's just not something you expect from Crazy. Paper X, is for it to be as quiet and as slow as it was like that. So especially on a map like Split, I think... I, again, I'm a little bit concerned for Loud. There are certain instances where individual 1v1s didn't go their way that ended up being massive difference makers at the end of the day. So I don't know if you want to play with pace and aggressive, but if you do, you, you have to be able to win those fights. Well, here is the Prime Ooh. Gaming Agent Select. Uh, mind free back on the Astra. Uh, there Forsaken on the Skywood. You guys make of these comps. This is the comp we expect out of Paper Rex. They have the default double duelist comp, but they do a lot of really, really cool things with it. They'll Viper Pit mid and pre-grab all the bottom so knowing can contest. On the other side for Loud on this attack hack, what you have to be worried about if you're a Loud fan is how are they going to create this A pressure, right? Normally you see a Viper, a Viper wall, you yeah. potentially see a Cypher. Rarely, rarely, rarely do you see a single controller with a Breach and a Killjoy. I don't know how they're going to do like mid-roundy type plays where they set up lurks on a ramp. It would get sniffed out really, really fast. There's there's just nothing that you have to threaten that pressure. Yes. You're absolutely right. But with that said, having the breach, they can instantly take B-man control. They could go a fast ramp control with the breach. They could do something fast towards mid with the fault line as well. They can do fast plays up mail and then cut noise. Well, can Loud bounce back and bring this to a map three? Let's find out and send it back to your casters. It's Bren and Sideshow. I certainly hope so. We end up seeing this one go all the way the distance in terms of the series. But uh, yeah, Split's going to be an interesting one. Loud's comp, you know, Sean was kind of touching on it about it's relatively unconventional when you look at most Split comps as well. Running a Killjoy, you know, just touching on the fact that your attack side defaults as well. You can't really get a lot of the lurks off if you are playing Killjoy. You, you are really tethered to one area of the map. Loud were also the team that popularized running double duelist with the Sky and the Viper on this map. Kind of wrote the book and Paper X took the book, tore out a bunch of the pages, scribbled their own notes all over <laughs> it and decided to play it at five times the speed. Yeah. Paper X is so fun to watch on this and I'm sure they'll have some aggressive defense ideas. It suits them nicely. Well, let's jump into it here. Map number two of Split. Paper X's map choice, nobody leading. And it looks like there's a setup here to try and fight over garage control. Fault line off the rip over for, uh, for Zadok. Waiting for signs of life. Both teams, actually. Forsaken took fall damage at the beginning. It's <laughs> round, that's just distracted me. Okay. Classic. Yeah, happens to the best of us, apparently. Can't heal himself. No, no, he cannot. Both teams are holding counter utility. Finally, Forsaken throws the flash just for information. Spots it out there, Trailblazer. Tucked deep into mid. The player spotted, at least not in ropes. Loud are keen and eager to try and take that space. Oh no. Three pull back star. Spot. Two years. He Terrible does not timing. realize this. Yep, yeah, there's a flash right in his face. Enough to dodge it. A decent attempt. Almost made all the difference there. Actually. Reaction. Okay, maybe not actually. Loud looking like they wanted to just absolutely beeline it into the B sites. Let's here with the sheriff. And that is beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The form from Les has been unreal. He just deletes everybody over by Garage as Paper X go for another exploration even deeper on that side of the map. Les was tearing apart Fnatic in their match. And, and he's been one of the most talented players in many of the tournaments that he's turned up to. I mean, these shots are just disgusting. <laughs> they know the round was salvaged. Yeah. Well, magic coming out from the loud camp, similar to what we saw from Paper X on map one. Same counter utility being thrown here. Sadak always ready with this fault line at the start in garage in case Paper X try and do anything this aggressive. This and a flash all combined together. It is a blender in the corner. Yeah, Paper X are not going to be able to do that. I mean, you can try it in these first couple of rounds when it doesn't matter too much and your economy's weak, but they're going to learn very quickly there that you do not want to be running into that stun nades, stun pull combo. And that's one of the major threats that Loud has been cooking up. We saw them run it on Pearl as well with that 
Astra Breach composition that they were running. They have so many combo plays that they can work with. <laughs> Shot by something. I was thinking, you know, Loud, they did expend a ton of util there, just methodically trying to pick apart the B side, looking for picks, and Paper X, you know they're going to be moving wow. up onto this angle. I mean, the re exploration is so fast, and the read is so good from Mind Freak and Divine, knowing that they wouldn't be still in garage after losing that player. They found the timing, but they still need something to hit another ridiculous one. Inside the smoke! Oh, yeah, well, stray body shot. Not enough for the kill, though. Let's drop down. Right there. 24 health. 30 seconds left. Two E's is very diligent. Watching the flank here. Picking out exactly where Divide would end up being. Oh, oh Minimap! Yeah, yep. He's yeah. just got his eyes off the prize. Minimap moment here. Grouped up now by Loud. They're actually sticking this together with three of their players. Heal in order. Make sure you bring less all the way back up. Do not let this one get messy. It's good positioning from them. Device got his own Viper Wall to play with. The time is going to be a big enemy and the Marshal even worse. With Divine not having any armor and being softened up from previous, that is a one shot. And there go the Brazilian fans. I think they're right. I don't think there's any chance here for Mind Freak. He is indeed going to die. Yeah. So to the spike. Loud now have an excellent chance of being able to cook something up for the bonus right here. This composition has so many different areas that you can go towards. Yes, it does lack, as the desk was saying, in terms of taking that slow, cautious, and hidden a ramp control that you really get from a lot of the smokers or from the cipher. But what it does excellently is combine utility together to get aggressive up onto a Paper X player. And it looks like they're going to try something. I mean, who needs to take slow ramp control if you just take it right at the beginning of the round? You're going to be fighting into Jing and Forsaken here instantly. Let's see what Paper X can do to withhold it. Facing the angles together. That's a pull. Yeah, they actually are trying to play it slowly. As soon as that smoke came down from 2 E's, the pull answered immediately from Mind Freak on the other side. Just making sure that nobody could cross, but they gain that space anyway. It's a bad flash. Here. They still have the information that Loud have crossed. Dubai. Potential duels all over the place here. Yeah. Sadak flashes in mid. Something may get Great greedy game. on this. Oh, you know he's going to swing it. He wanted it. The dash to get back, though. Another flash that gives Save bad information. Yes, and Zine takes off Jing's head. Only Divai left here alone. Oh, sorry, finish. Forsaken. Forsaken. Back to the corner here. Spotted out. Still Divai into the ropes. Oh, nobody meeting him. Loud. Feeling like... Good exploration towards every area of the map, but now finally grouping up towards A. Meanwhile, Paper X also starting to reclear and hold on to A heaven themselves, giving up control of the site. Sean and Doug were talking about the difference in pace of these two teams when they were on their attack sides of Lotus. This is a very slow round by Loud. They've seconds. got 30 seconds. There doesn't seem to be a threat in terms of them actually getting the plant down. I'm has got a pull, though. That's so how he chooses to use this one. Stun. Cut up close. 20 seconds remaining. Forsaken. Chance. Might get cheeky with it. Waiting for it. A bit of a tap yeah. on the plant. Pinging. Into the back corner of the side. Anything to dissuade it? No, not quite. Spike Sadek plenty. now becomes a lurker on Breach, which is an unusual position for him to be playing. But Loud's post plant looks fairly solid. Yeah. Sadak oh, will now realize he has an excellent timing, having heard the drop. Yeah, he hears the ropes. Utah's being broken by something. Doesn't work himself into the anger, but look at it again. It's discipline being showcased by Loud. High, low, crouch setup. Elbow. Containing it, seeking now with the flash. That's a bit of a team flash, actually. Forsaken, let's play with it. Mind Freak does a good job there to claim the two, but he's got to try and isolate way too many fights and brought down. So, bonus round conversion. Loud in control pretty heavily. This is one of the major strengths that they had when they were playing against Fnatic the other day. But in a very different way to the avenue in which I was expecting it to go, Brent. I thought we'd see something explosive, some fast ramp control, utilizing that double initiator setups and the blast packs from Aspas, and instead it was slow. Yeah. And it was baiting Paper X into going for those info peaks. They didn't get good information off Forsaken's flashes, and instead they had to face, they had to body check and loud punish them for it. Weaponry for Paper X, making sure that they deal with the dog, but it doesn't get broken. Something sneaks forward off the back of it, trying to step in front of oh, the So far forwards, actually. Boom, pop. no way. Sound spotted. Were made, yeah. Either spotted or heard. But they know at the back of their minds. 
easy kill to collect. And look at this pace. Loud, so slow and diligent, clearing out all of these positions and waiting to try and play a punish game much more than going fast, quick into Paper X. This is actually how Lotus began with Loud's attack side, if you think about it. Trying to punish the pistol round aggression, seeing if they could find early fights and force Paper X into making the mistakes. And then it all got wrapped up into chaos. Yeah. Mind free. Only with the Stinger, not enough to really do much. Takes a ton of damage in the process, just trying to leave and evacuate. Drop down. Satan and Jing. Surely they hear that. Nade rebounding, shots fired, damage done, and a kill collected. But louder in control. Firmly. A 4 0 start is, is exactly what Louder have been looking for. And so far, the game plan looks really good. Especially when you see what Paper X is doing around the map, something trying to take fights in mid aggressively whenever he can, no matter what the buy is, the reclears through garage, the way in which they want to face a main aggressively on defense. There are a lot of places around the map where Paper X are trying to force fights instead of allowing it to come to them. And Louder reading into that and punishing them for it. I think this timeout here. While it might seem a little early for Alex to be calling it, does make sense. Usually you can't get that much of a read off the pistol round and bonus round because it, it's just kind of buffered by a couple of ecos that yeah. don't mean too much. It's easier for us to get the read from out here when we can see the full mini map and all of the different perspectives, but this gives you some kind of idea that Coach Alex wants to make an adjustment in terms of how they're playing the defense. And I think they will end up being a little more passive once something gets his operator online. This time, I wouldn't be surprised if Lao do just decide to increase the tempo. It's been slow going, beginning of most of these rounds now. Perfect way to condition and lull your opponent. Certainly. If Alex is going to make an adjustment to sit back a little deeper into the site, maybe Lao are going to be able to play quick and get onto an anchored player really early on. They'll also be keeping track of the economy and know that it is possible for something to have this op. But there are many different lanes around Split where he could be playing it. Doing this against Aspas himself as well. Guy, some masterclass performance often. He's been playing the jet in the past on this map, and wow. what a way to deal with it. The damage was done. That was <laughs> actually a leg shot with a no scope. That's ridiculous, though. Something is in such an unusual spot there, and the stun comes through immediately into his swings. I mean, that, that is not them trying to hold counter utility and waiting for some kind of cue. That is them immediately trying to punish on both sides of the map. Trailblazer on one side, stun on the other. Let's see if we can catch something with his operator immediately trying to pick on one of the extremities. It works a treat. I played that so well. Alex is going to have his head in his hands here because they've just come out of a timeout. One of the most you know, useful pieces of tools he has to be able to communicate with the rest of the team. Mind free going for a re exploration. This is so you risky. You're up against run. the double initiator lockdown in your face. Do you really try and take a peak timing off of this? Oh, it's, it's sloppy. All over the place. Oh, it's sloppy, and Sadak just cleans them up. Yeah, there's just no idea or identity behind what they want to do. Free plan offered. Jing. This is a full investment with the rifles here. Paper X. To do what they hate the most, really. Saving. Backing away from a fight. Divine Jing and Spawn need these guns. Yeah, they gotta hold them. And while that's a good kill, it does give away their positioning. But this is loud now, gonna be with five rounds, no matter what. I'd like to see Sadak send it here. Maybe even Aspas as well. I mean, maybe they just don't think the Divine Jing are gonna still be holding in this spot. But that makes a lot of oh, sense. Oh, take a look at the replay as well, man. It is just ridiculous. But something's positioned. <laughs> on top of the box, too. Yeah, it's insane. What a situation to open up the round. Louder playing the punish game perfectly here. And the desk got a lot of doubts about this map. And the one coming up after this, Pearl, potentially. If Louder indeed able to take this one away. Caution here. Because Loud have looked a little shaky here. They got absolutely dumpstered by DRX on this map. And their ideas have been hit or miss. Certainly hidden now. Oh, yeah. An immense lead. And you were pointing out earlier, you know, you wanted to see that Loud players hunting out a couple of these kills. They are 
Very close to some of these critical ultimates. Something's going to try and play for the orb here off the back of the Trailblazer, it looks like, to get his Bladestorm online. I mean, didn't spot less, but I mean, the Nana Swarms should definitely lay it down, cutting him off that angle. Not enough, though, so Bladestorm earned. On the other side of the map, though, Salak might be able to play for this one, and then they have a rolling thunder to get into B. A lot have been putting in serious emphasis on B main control, because that's where their composition thrives. It doesn't thrive over towards A ramp, as the desk was discussing. In a corner, surely you get cleared out here. Nade. They're not even going oh, for the breach off. Back here, yeah, yeah, not going for it. That's a really lovely timing on the pull. And it's Paper X, a collapse under the choke. One enemy remaining. Everybody falling, two years included. So, first round on the board here for Paper X. A necessary answer back. Couldn't really tell you why Loud don't go for the ultimates in that kind of situation. You know, they're one away from being able to get uh, the Breach out online, the Cosmic Divide as well. Those could have been enormous tools for stopping these players in their crossfire spots. Maybe trying to back on the fact that they, their timing was a little more obfuscated, but... Loud failing to convert that ult advantage, and now have given Paper X a chance to solidify their economy. This fight happening over A main early on, something was trying to get aggressive in this spot before. Spotted out. And here's the breach shot, finally. Collection onto the two players. But will there be kills following up? Outro, yes, there will. The utility is magnificent. Fantastic. Showstopper denied. Jing earning it with just the one kill here, but shut down. Cosmic Divide used. Drop down. Close to the corner. It's another hand <laughs> made. As fast as heard them. Forcing them back and away. Showstopper still close to the corner. Vulnerable's there. Now being forced out of him into the side. Though something! No, but a transfer. Just for the one. Mind freak. Consistency in bounds. But Sadak also there to reply. Divine out. If Divine gets the kill, his pit could make this a winnable round. It's a 1v2. Less. Spiraling. Yep. Just holding close to the corner. And no angles given. No sight lines. Turret spotting him and out. Divai, so much to play for there, but an impossibility. So Loud take their ults and end up using them in the next to excellence. The breach are catching those players that were further forward. Cosmic Divide as well, just creating a little pocket, which Aspas knew they were in. He still got punished for it. He didn't quite think to check behind himself and watch for something, but. Paper X were baited into going for plays there where Loud were so ready to collapse. The punish has just been excellent from Loud. Almost impeccable. Almost perfection. Something's going to try and take a pick over towards A ramp. It is difficult for them to smoke this off. But here they're using the Astro Utility nicely from 2 E's. Crossed up. Forsaken. And when the smoke fades. Chance That's for a shot in the dark. Here's the jiggle, here's the jump spot. Forsaken so lucky to get away with his life. Still crossed up though. Something did not intend for that one. Just received the kill. And Les was going for the swing, trying to punish something there for beeping the movement. Couldn't quite manage it. This is one of those honestly rare situations in which Paper X have been able to generate the advantage early on. A 6 1 down, but up a player in this round with a pit in mid, controlling most of the map. The only weakness currently looks like B, where Mind Freak is holding. And Forsaken's coming over with his Seekers, just to give him a little bit of peace of mind. Seekers getting caught <laughs> ever so slightly. But it still tells you that Loud are playing spread with 30 seconds. It does, yeah. It does, definitely. It's going to be so tough for Loud to get into a winning position here, but they are grouping up over towards B. Seconds left. Less has done enough there, I think, making noise. Flash didn't connect, though, actually. That's recleared, and immediately you're going to see that rotation from Forsaken pushing forwards to Vi out of the pit. And yeah, none the wiser from Less. Just trying to regroup with the rest of his team, but it's given him exactly the information he needs. Mind free court into the corner. This pull pulled out. Satchel's abound! And you're going to win these gun jewels out, but it's all out! Five Time. seconds! It's up to the, the final few seconds. You're going to try and stick this one close to the corner. Forsaken denies it! Oh my. 5 HP off the initial jump spot. Took three ba Vandal body shots down to five health with his light armor. Yeah. And that ends up making a lot of the difference. Loud fans. Keep watching the game for now. No 7 1 in sight. That was avoided. Well, is that some kind of curse if it's the other way around, is it? Well, not quite a curse, mate, but I, I won't go there. 
I mean, it wasn't I them. won't go there. <laughs> it wasn't them that were up that time. That's true. That is true. Something playing with the operator over towards mid. They had the pit there previously, trying to deny Loud that space. Does seem like a good idea. Force them into going for the burst exact. Oh, and something. Going for a risky peek through the smoke. That is now going to tell Loud that they can take mid control fairly easily, freely, without using that utility. You see Aspas just wandering up. Just deep flank all the way through, man. I mean, Trezzler is spotting it. Do they want to try and commit further? No, it doesn't look like it. But Paper Rex are reclearing both sides of the map at once, and I think that's a little dangerous here. Something knows there's nobody over towards A, They've lost which means control. there should be people on B. Yeah. So you can't really play into that main angle anymore. There's no safety there. Mind free inside of his own smoke. In a tremendous world of herd, unless he can get the bailout from the rest of his team now. Starting to flood back into this one. 50 seconds here. Satchel across and over. Aspas. Just faking with the movement. That's a shorty in your hand. Something, but still, with the rifle fire. It's contained and shut down. Less still here. And it's brought into a 1v1. Timing granted. That's unreal. Les is just a monster. He's taken out to an absolutely next level. 14 and 3. Every time he's challenged, every time he's asked a question of, he answers, he delivers. It's just been absurd. He's been the MVP for them in previous tournaments too. Looked like the best player whenever he has moments like this. But at this point, Honestly, the, the specter of these low-level performances from Loud that haunted them in Tokyo and at the beginning against the RX, they, they look to have been completely banished. The form is right back there with the best times that we've seen Loud. Something's desperate to try and make anything happen over towards Garage. Paper X are so heavy. Pushing out the extremities on defense. They're getting all of this information towards A. And they did in the prior round too. But they can't convert it into good positioning to be able to stop the sight hits. No way, Forsaken. Less fires a shot off, so. I can't believe you would want Whoa. to contest Less. <laughs> it's absurd. 14 and 3, yet still. Set the sights into mid. They spot out something. Okay, clear it out just in case they push through into sewers. Lovely diligence there with a the flash. But surely that should be a bit of recognition now from Paper X. The ultimates are awesome here from Loud. Run. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for Paper X to do anything about it. If Jin grabs a kill, the showstopper would be a massive tool something's and something. Something's fighting this. He, he's looking to he's try and contest. Man. There's two, two seconds, seconds remaining. There's two seconds remaining. Standing his ground. Can't get it off really there with the updraft. Okay. Brought down eventually. And they're just trying to help him out. Flooding back into the fight. Loud have got it all on the left. Again. That is... Ridiculous. We see those kind of plays frequently at this point. People trying to get in front of the lockdown, see if they can grab a couple of kills as these players are getting into the site off the back of it. And then the rest of the retakers use that player as bait. But here, both teams understood that so well. The rest of Paper X are coming in there, trying to use the distraction of something. And everybody on Loud is just waiting for it. Holding those avenues towards heaven and spawn. Absolute destruction that we are witnessing here on Split. Fast rocket play here. This is Paper X. Two rounds left. They got the ult to try and make a go of this one here, but not and really no money. Home. And there's no one home. There's yet. no one home at all. Jing loves to make this play. We've seen Paper X do it so often. That is a hard read from Loud. An instantaneous reaction. Right up through, taking a heaven control. Starting to swarm the positioning now. A mind free nade at the feet. Got to respect to the back away, but there's so much damage being done here. Heaven control. Given away, flipped over to the side here. Satchels breaks the crosshair placement. There's no clean fight for something. Divide locked into the corner, and he will not be able to anchor. It's curtains for Paper X. On Lotus, Loud felt like they were in control of the first half, but Paper X was still finding their moments. The thrifties, they won the pistol round. They were getting into it, and they bought enough time for a massive 1v4 from something to take him from negative four to plus 11 and get that star player back into the game. I feel like here, we're in a similar kind of situation. We're louder in control strategically. The coordination is all excellent too. And yet Paper X are not finding the magic. They're not getting those big moments. Instead, louder punishing them. And we're seeing an absolutely dominant half. 
Paperex is double duelist. Don't count them out on the attack side, but you still need to generate some rounds here on defense. Yeah. You gotta have something. You, you gotta get something going. In both senses. Exactly. Set that one up for you, didn't I? Slam dunk. <laughs> Now the wealth is unbelievable from Loud here. Tui's is going to be rocking an operator to begin with, with a rifle, I assume, on the floor as well. Watching for any kind of aggression. And Paper X is sitting back just a tad. Double up draft committed with Bladestorm. They have not been spotting anybody over towards A in almost all of these rounds, except when Jing had his showstopper. Unless he's playing so passively in that angle almost all the time. Yeah, and yet Paper X is still trying to force the fights in that area of the map repeatedly. Gamble not paying off, not working. A lot of util. Jumped into ropes there with an aid and the flashes just to try and push back and take control of mid, but it does pull players away. Blinded. The flash does connect onto less. Sagan's reposition here. He's got a flash up in two. I mean, he's close to the corner. Drone Blazer should be good as well. Broken though. Only sees less. Great work from the rest of Loud to be hiding. Making it feel like it could still be a default. Baiting for Saken forwards. Contacting in using this. Recall start as a flash play of the orb. Everybody dodging it and enough bodies to receive. Here it is. Moving all the way forwards now to showstopper. Earned up. Aspas. Love a kill. Ricocheting it across the back wall there. Real damage done. No kill either. Still. Paper X. That's for a chance now to try and get that third round on the board. It's really their only goal and chance and opportunity. Less is missing off to the side there with his back towards it. And they're just being picked apart, man. I mean, Paper X, I don't know which way to look. One way to the spawn, one way this way. But Less is ridiculous. This guy's having a field day. Another three piece in a round to set it all up for a 10 2 finish. And the star of the show is absolutely less. They're calling a beautiful attack side as well. I love the utility coming out from Sadak and Tui's in combination. But the player has 21 kills up at the top of the scoreboard. Les is taking all of the safe duels here and then winning post fights. It's just too easy for this guy. It really is, man. 10 to 2 at the half. Paper X. The pull up. Absolutely impossible margins in terms of. Getting back into this one, well, we heard from Aspas earlier heading into this series about you know, what he thought about the expectations. Foi uma coisa que me deixou muito feliz porque a gente conseguiu o nosso rematch contra a Fnatic e agora a gente conseguiu acertar as contas. Agora tá um a um. Sim, eu já estava preparado para ter essa revanche contra eles. Não, eu achava que seria um dois a um, bem. Apertado, acabou que foi um 2 a 0 com o primeiro mapa muito apertado e o segundo mapa foi um placar um pouquinho mais elástico, então não foi do jeito que eu esperava. Acho que sim, a gente é agora é basicamente os dois times rivais do campeonato. Como a NRG não tá aí mais, não, que eram nossos maiores rivais, agora eu acho que fica entre a gente e a Fnatic. Eu acho que uma das coisas que a gente faz diferente da Loud do ano passado é o fato que a gente testa mais comps. A gente usa mais comps em mapas diferentes. Já no passado, com a outra Loud, a gente usava mais só as comps padrões mesmo. E com essa daqui, a gente está testando bastante comps. Fnatic, they got to get a move on here. Now, Flash is magnificent! Leo with the most to do, but this is it. It's curtains for map one. Loud, fully in control, not a chance in hell. Spike in nowhere, man. I have the spike. And Loud know it, they can feel it. Eu acho que jogar contra o Something vai ser muito legal, porque ele é um jogador que tem muita mira, muita mira mesmo. É sempre uh, interessante ver o estilo de jogo dele, que é um estilo de jogo mais focado em mira, porque ele abre e te dá na cara, então vai ser legal jogar contra ele. Grande, grande amigo do Jing e queria muito jogar contra vocês, então finalmente, espero que a gente tenha uma boa partida. Forward to this matchup as well against this, you know, duelist opposition, and uh, so far so good for him. You know, listen, sing the praises of Les as well. But you know, Aspas was criticised, I think, at Tokyo as well about some of the roles that he was playing across the board. But he's always been a heavy hitter. He certainly has. I feel like the duelist matchup has not really been the story though so far on Split, and Paperx would like to turn that into a reality. They're hoping that something and Jing are going to be able to use the initiator utility 
to bring this one back from the brink. Oh my goodness, Faber X. All the way up into heaven. Not worried about trap plays or util. That is oh. disgusting. I mean, let's just take a peak angle off the turret. Contact! Trying to reset it there with the aim and enough shots there. Ukawazine with the backstab. 11 to 2, another pistol round. Destructive. Absolutely destructive. Loud winning both pistols. The first bonus with an opportunity if they convert this round 14 for another. And this, this is what it looks like when not only are you able to win the pistols and the bonuses, but you're also able to win the majority of the gun rounds too against another competition, an another team that's fighting for one of the best teams in the tournament, for one of the best teams in the world. Paper X are going to force, because of course they are. They're down 2 to 11. Yeah, no choice but to do it. Heading into this one with a Stinger's a long range. Never really favored. Stuns connecting and online here. Let's find the another. corner. They still have this space as well. Damage being done towards and it. Another. Close towards it. Less is just unleashed. Eventually shut down and brought down. Sadak taking enough damage that he can't really support and help it out. Still, player advantage. Aspas with the nade, plenty of util now, and you can start to see the clearance into elbow, tucking towards the back. Swinging through, mind freak. Definitely being more than a nuisance, honestly, with that kill here. Forwards is the approach and trying to take the fight into them. Divai doesn't know if there's a second player there, but here's the drop down now, but it's still a 1v2, and he's not favored. Yeah. I want to double up like that. Loud have just been impeccable with how they've been playing together in a lot of these moments. And when there is a single player, Facing and contesting, they're supported heavily by the utility. I mean, with this composition, <laughs> I thought it might be a bit concerning. Because while the utility is excellent against the double duelist composition, you might, with the pace and the tempo that Jing and, uh, and something play at, you might get caught with util in your hands. You know, Cowan has got a flash in his hands, or Sadak's holding a stun or something. But when Les is taking contact off the back of all of that, Initiate a utility, you take a player that's already in red hot form and you make them favored in a lot of the duels. It's just been monstrous. Propel them forwards. This basically looks like perfection from Split. In terms of how to shut down that double duelist. There's a way here, less of the jump spot. Oh, hello. Caught wide, but no damage done. This would have to be one of the most monstrous comebacks we've seen. A lot of people considering Paper X to be favored on this map, but no wiggle room whatsoever to make this composition work. It's a shutout. Loud dismantling a comp that they are extremely familiar with and making Paper X look like headless chickens in a lot of these rounds. Yeah, and because of the prior buy and force up as well, Paper X, I mean, it's really just a half fight coming into this, the round that they must win to keep their chances going. As fast as angle is disgusting! Light work for him. It's two kills, two is with the Bucky! Not with the Bucky. Oh, he had to do it to him. Mind Freak sneaking up around the side as well. And it's just over, isn't it? Complete it collapse, is. Mind Freak. It's the last one left, would have to pull off. A miracle is 13 to two for our second map, Loud. What a bounce back. Or did anybody think after the incredible overtime in the back and forth of Lotus that we were headed to a stomp like this? It didn't even factor in for me. I didn't think there was any chance of the possibility. But Les, with 420 ACS, has just crushed them. And a great game plan from Loud. Life game from Les overall as well. Next map coming up is Pearl. You do not want to miss that one. We are going all the way. We'll see you just after this.